this video, I will go through how we do calendar sharing, uh, contact list sharing, and uh, task sharing in Simbra. Uh, so you also can share it with your Outlook calendars and so on. So you need access to your, your Outlook and you need your email set up as ActiveSync, not IMAP or POP. We have video instruction on this on karun.com if you go to Simbra Mail. Um, if you would like us to set it up for you, we can do that. It's a £10 fee per computer and calculate about 30 minutes to do all the testing and, you know, to see that everything is working and you learn how to use it. Uh, secondly, you need to be able to log into your webmail. So now let's get started. In this demonstration, I will uh, put myself as an administrator for uh, calendars and contact lists. Um, that's probably the IT responsible that will do this or one of the coordinators at the school that will be the one that controls the sharing and give the right permission and so on. So you have to indicate the person to do that. So uh, I will start now by uh, going into my Simbra as the local admin and I will go to contact. Here I will create a contact list that is called, um, let's see, I'll give it a name. Uh, for example, it can be uh, our staff. Okay. I'll give it a color to separate them. And it's added. Now I have added our staff. So now I will share it. So I'll right click and I can share it with an internal user or a group. You can create groups in Simbra. Uh, distribution list so you don't have to add every single user on this list but for this demonstration I will just share it with a test user that I have in the system and uh, this contact list I will give him the right to do some changes or maybe not maybe he will only be able to view in this example I will just do manage just to be able to demonstrate my limitations and possibilities I can on adding content to the content list. All right, that was the contact. Now I'll go to the calendar. Again, I will create a calendar and I will just call it uh, school. I'll give it a different color and I click OK. Now I stay on the list. I will also share this Uh, and I will again share it to Morton, TK. This is a school calendar and I just want everybody to be able to see it, you know, without having to uh, edit it. You can also put them to edit some of them or all of the users. That was uh, the school calendar. Let me just see that I got the right one. So the other one was marked. Yeah, now it's at least, I think I'm going to share the wrong calendar. But now I have shared this one, it is cool. Uh, you can also create more calendars. You can, for example, call it uh, uh, IT. Uh, and that could be, for example, if you are an IT responsible, you could have a calendar and you can share it with the, the responsible, maybe at the care home, the school and so on, so they can see where you are and which day and so on. That's up to you. For now, it was just to show the option. I will not share this calendar. Now I have shared this calendar. I will go to task. Uh, you can create, create a task list. And I'm an IT guy, so I will make my IT tasks. Um, and uh, again, you can have, uh, you can share it with people. And uh, if they should only be able to view or if they should be able to add to your task, that also depends on you. Uh, just for demonstration, let's say that they can also add and remove. Okay, so now I have shared one contact one calendar, one task. So now I will head over to Morton and see how it looks in Outlook. 
you will see I've got some emails here about uh, sharing. And uh, if I click on them, uh, the only problem I have is that I don't have an accept button or decline button. Because you do need to do this before you get it, uh, get access to it. It's a problem with Outlook and I think some Java for buttons. So therefore what you have to do is to sign in as Morton on your webmail. And I'm signed in here now as Morton on my webmail. I go to my mail and here I will see all, I will go to test this. I will just accept them all. You can accept it. That doesn't exist. That's an old test. Uh, let's try this one. That has not been accepted. There's some more calendars here. So I will just, uh, I think I've done this maybe twice. That's already done. This one. Accept. So now I should have accepted all. Some of them were twice because I have done this testing so many times. Uh, so, but now I have accepted all this. So if I now go to contact, you see I have here a list of all the contacts, though no one has been created. Calendar, I have access to Morton IT's calendar and I have access to the school's calendar. And task, I now have as access to the IT tasks. Okay, how does it look in Outlook? I go into Outlook, uh, I do send and receive, just to make sure it's updated, and I go to the calendar. Now you can see that I have access to the calendars here. Uh, Morton IT, uh, I don't need to actually see it all the time, so you don't have to tick it off. But this is important. I want to see my own calendar here, and I want to see the school's calendar here. Uh, when I want to know about Morton, I just click at him and I will see his calendar here as well. And I can untick it. So you can have several calendar for the car, for everything, and you can just mark them when you want to see them. You can book cars, you can do everything. One calendar per car that everybody can edit, for example. Um, so as you see, as you click them, you get them next to each other like this. You can also right click. On the calendar and then you can say let me see where it was uh, there was one called overlay so if I do overlay then they will come on top of each other like this up here so calendar in Karuni IT is now overlay and I will also overlay portals so now I have the three calendars in this way okay so they will show different colors in here when you added blue for calendar, red for Karuni IT, and green would be the schools. So just to do an example here, I am Morton. Let me see, if, did I have access to edit uh, this calendar? I will give it a go. Let's say tomorrow. Uh, test of Morton. And it's... Uh, not an all-day event, it starts at uh, 9.30 and it finishes 11 and I say test. So now you can see it, it turns green because it's a school event. So you can also, uh, uh, yeah, you can, you can organize this in different ways, whatever you think is the, the best thing. All right, so now I have done a test in the calendar. So if I now go into... Uh, my administrator, let me see in the calendar. Here you can see in the school calendar, it shows that he has added an event at 9.30. This is admin. So this is how all the calendar works together. And if admin also use Outlook, it will also show in his Outlook. That's how you do sharing with calendar. Let's now have a look at the task list. Task here, uh, I obviously have made two different calendars, but I have a list here with the Peroni IT task. Now I cannot remember if I actually allowed myself to do this. Um, uh, test one, um, dun dun dun. owner, sign. Well, let's see, if I can't remember if I gave myself the right to do that. I think I did. So now I have added a task 
to the task list uh, of IT, for example. Again, I go in as an admin, I go to the tasks, and uh, let me see if it has come, and here the task is uh, visible now for me. Again, you have to decide about permission, who should be able to add, or if they should only be able to see, and so on. Okay, the last thing we have is a contact. I have made a contact list that is our staff. I'm the IT administrator. So I am the one that updates and keep this uh, correct. So here I will start by adding a user. Uh, I can call Morton A. Uh, his email is mortonkaruni.com. Uh, and I will uh, save this in our staff calendar. Now I will go in as Morton in my Outlook and I will go to my um, contacts. So here you will see now, I will see the contact that has just been created. So here you will have a long list of contacts and it has been created by the administrator that is available for you. What you have to know here is if you create a new contact here, like you who are, who are, are not the main admin in Outlook, it will only be visible for you. It will not be visible for everybody else. If you have the permission to add to this contact book new contacts, you have to do that from your webmail, where you can go in as yourself. You go into this contact book and you add a second contact here. More than three. And just call it something else. and then you save it. Here you can, if you have the permission, you can uh, add contacts to the common list from your webmail. So when you go into Outlook again, it's visible here. When the administrator or any other person log in to our staff, it should be visible for him as well, and it's right here. So, what you can do in your Outlook is, if you are dealing with a contact that is already there, let's say this Morton A, I open him, I speak to him and I actually get the phone number. You can edit the contacts if you have permission to edit. So you can add a phone number, you can add some notes about that uh, person, you can do different things and you can save it. Okay, and the phone number will be here. This you are able to do directly from Outlook if you have edit permission. So if I now go in as the admin and if I just refresh it, you know, you will see the phone number here. The refresh takes place automatically every two minutes anyway, but just to push it. So here you can see the phone number has been added. So in this way you can build different contact lists, different calendars, different task lists, in your Simbra and you can share it down in your Outlook and if you want you can share it on your mobile phone as well using uh, uh, various apps there and we also have some videos about that. I hope that the instruction was useful, uh, give it a try and let me know if there's anything I can